this is something that we are talking about inside of the Patreon. I did a live stream where I broke down the capabilities of it and how you can leverage it in order to get a huge bag. Um, I'm going to be doing the next update on it because there's some new things that came out that I want to show you guys I've been working on. Uh, but AI, AI is a huge deal right now. People are saying that they can't tell the difference between what is real and what is fake anymore. And I agree with them. Decades of sci-fi. Well, let's come back to this one. Let's come back to this. We're going to come back to Sam Altman. Sam Altman is the CEO and the person that is spearheading what is going on over at OpenAI, which is the owners and the founders of ChatGBT. But uh, this is one of the things that dropped that I thought was interesting before we go over to his conversation, all right? The so-called AI slop all over the internet these days. Angela Carter here live. Is getting less sloppy. Disaster. Just kidding. I'm not real. With hyper-realistic AI-generated sham news clips circulating, often presented as a joke. Dana Brooks reporting live from Ocean View. But what's becoming not so funny, how easily reality can be confused with the fakes. White House unveils plan to train bald eagles as patriotic aerial surveillance units. Can you tell the difference? Well, President Trump meets today with another global leader as his administration promises more trade deals. The one on the left is AI generated, while the right is real. The launch of Google's VO3 earlier this year, shocking users and the industry with how realistic the model is, plus how it can be paired with audio generation. Reporting live from Clearwater Beach, where an unidentified... And as the lines blur, the AI clips of fake reports or newsworthy events that that never happened, even reaching the Oval Office. With President Trump posting this provocative AI-generated video of former President Obama being arrested at the White House. In many ways, it's an obvious example of misinformation or parody easily debunked. But what happens when it's not so obvious? We used to say that seeing is believing and that's no longer the case. It's making life hard for Emmanuel Saliba, a content verification expert and a former NBC News reporter. She says the tech is getting so advanced, the fake videos are routinely being spread across the world and reported as fact. During that gap between an event happening and authorities or media having any sort of confirmation, that's where we're seeing all of this AI-generated content. Strict. And the, the scary part about this is that even though we may, that as content creators, I can tell the difference right now. So far, I can tell the difference. Uh, I see guys that are subscribing to AI OnlyFans models or AI Instagrams. I said, what in the world is going on? Y'all really do like this that much? Like, y'all don't know how to separate the real world from the fake world. I think that it's going to continue to get more advanced. It's going to continue to get better. And that's the scary part about this whole thing. And so one of the things that I went over inside of the, the Patreon is how to more effectively write prompts that generate the type of, you know, videos and all of this type of stuff and what you can use it for. But I think that there's a fine line between it. And I know that Trump was... Uh, doing executive orders in order to try to rein in some versions of AI. I also know that uh, Alphabet, parent company of Google and YouTube, uh, is making sure that they get a rein on it because they want real content creators creating content on a platform. But it is scary. It's a very scary thing to think that people are going to be creating and generating AI and that's the only thing that some people can't tell the difference between because y'all send me stuff sometimes in an email and I actually blocked a couple people uh, in my email today because it's, it's some of the stuff that y'all sending me. It's like, are y'all vetting this or are you, are you only looking at the title and sending it to me? Because when I go and I look at it and I'm like, it's not even real. And once I got it like three times from the same person, I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and just block this because you are sending me 67 videos every single day and it's not even relevant to anything that I talk about. You know what I'm saying? And so when I see some of this stuff, I see some stuff on X, formerly known as Twitter. I seen some stuff on, on uh, um, TikTok the other day. And it's like, wait a minute, that's not even what happened or don't, can't you see that that's not real or whatever? You know, and, and people are not able to see the difference. And so that's when it can get dangerous because it's so easy to impress people. It's so easy to create a narrative. It's so easy to do something in particular. And so y'all going to have to be a little bit more mindful 
of how things are playing out because it's not going to be the best thing for you. Here is uh, Sam Altman speaking specifically about his fears for AI. Decades. Even of though he's not going to stop innovating in it, this is what his fears are. Sci-fi telling us that AI is eventually going to kill us all. And since you know more about AI than arguably anybody in this room, I just want to ask you, what does keep you up at night? What are the things that you worry about when it comes to AI? And how do we prevent those things that you worry about from coming true? I think there's three sort of scary categories. Um, there's a bad guy gets super intelligence first and misuses it before the rest of the world has a powerful enough version to defend. So a, an adversary of the US says, um, I'm gonna use this super intelligence to design a bioweapon um, to take down the United States power grid to- Which is one of the reasons why there's always going to be an arms race. You're never going to get anybody that says that they're on the good side because everybody thinks that they're on the good side. You're never going to get anybody that's on the good side to stop developing because in their mind or their justification for it is going to be, well, well, what if our enemies get a better version of it? So we have to stay ahead of it, which for us from a job perspective, especially when it comes to cybersecurity and machine learning and so on and so forth, that is why you want to focus your studies into going into the innovative long-term technologies that is going to give you a bag and keep you employed, all right? If you just think that you're just going to continue to do the same thing, you're going to go into liberal arts and it's going to be okay, it's not okay. We They're not going to need you. Marketing, done. So many different subjects is going to be done. they just selling y'all these courses and they're giving y'all these curriculums and they're wasting your time just to say that you got a piece of paper at this point, all right? But the fact of the matter is there's always going to be an arms race. For technology, to stay ahead of technology, to make sure that you're outpacing your enemies, all of this stuff. And this is why there's always going to be a heavy investment in AI. You know, break into the financial system and take everyone's money. S something that would just be hard to imagine without significantly superhuman intelligence, but with it becomes very possible. And because we don't have that, we can't defend against it. So that's category, broad category one. Um, and I think that the bio capability of these models the cybersecurity capability of these models, these are getting quite significant. You know, we continue to like flash the warning lights on this. I think the world is not taking us seriously. I don't know what else we can do there, but it's like this is a very big thing coming. Uh, category two. You say healthcare will always be a great trade. Let me tell you something, baby girl. I don't think so. Listen, anything that you think will not be disrupted will anything look there are doctors that there is technology that is being used to basically have ai and machines assist air quotes lightly assist doctors and surgeries assist nurses so on and so forth if you don't think that the healthcare industry is one of the number one industries that is going to be impacted by what happens with ai you are sadly mistaken. You are 100% off. Listen, there are people trying to figure out how, have y'all seen the La Quinta? Have y'all seen the La Quinta video where um, people are checking in and they're not even checking in with ho regular hotel staff no more? Let me see if I can find that. Y'all haven't seen the La Quinta, the, the hotel chain and how they checking people in now? Everything is going to be, everything is going to be disrupted in life forever, forever. Let me see. This is crazy. Hold on. Let's see if I can share my screen with you guys real quick. Okay. Uh, maybe one room key or two room key? Uh, two, just in case I lose one. Yes, I'll just make this for you. 
I know y'all can't hear it that good, but registration form. Please note that we have a strict policy of no smoking, no pets, and no visitors allowed in any of our guest rooms. Signature must match the one on your ID. Using your finger, please sign where it says guest signature when you see the form on the screen. All right, sir. I will just uh, process your room receipt, which contains all the property. What's stopping AI? What's stopping AI from taking that job in that position right there? They have basically gotten rid of, or they're trying to get rid of, and they're testing it by having remote workers be the one that check you in, and then they can issue a card in order for you to have your room, and now they're getting rid of agents, right? So what's stopping an AI assistant from being able to assist you from checking in and issuing you, issuing you another card for your room? What's stopping them? The Yotel in Miami is completely AI ran. What's stopping them? What's stopping them from being able to completely? I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Somebody said, couldn't you just check in from the app? You absolutely can check in from the app. But some people want physical room keys. What I believe, yep, power line workers, 100%. What I believe, again, and I said this before, is that the new the new luxury is going to be things that are manual, being able to talk to people, being able to have, you're only going to have a concierge, a hotel check-in staff member. Those are going to be at the higher end hotels, at the regular hotels, at the Holiday Inns, at the La Quintas and stuff like that. In order for them to stay in business and in order for them to compete, and they're going to continue to try to shave costs. They're going to be implementing a version of this. And they've already been training us to do it. You can't go to the airport. You can't go into a McDonald's. You can't go into a, a, a something at the airport, a restaurant at the airport, without multiple people lining up so that they can go to the, the screen to order their food. And we've trained ourselves to not want to be around people, not want to have human interaction, not want to talk to people. Everything is going to be disrupted. Everything. The thing that you got to figure out is how can you make money from it? What service can you provide and take advantage of it? But let's get back to the Sam Altman conversation. It was the sort of broadly called loss of control incidents where the that's kind of like the sci-fi movie. The AI is like, oh, I don't actually want you to turn me off. I'm afraid I can't do that, you know, whatever. Um, and that's, I think that is less of a concern to me than the first category, but a very grave concern if it came to pass. There's a lot of work we and other companies do um, on model alignment to prevent that from happening. But as these systems become so powerful, uh, that's a real concern. And then there's the third one, which I think those first two are sort of easy to think about and imagine. The third one is to me difficult, more difficult to imagine, but quite scary. And I'll, I'll explain what it is and then I'll give a short term and a long term example. Um, this is the category where the models kind of accidentally take over the world. They never wake up, they never do the sci fi thing, they never open the pod bay doors, but they just become so ingrained in society. And they're so much smarter than we are. And we, we can't really understand what they're doing, um, but we do kind of have to rely on them. And even without a drop of malevolence from anyone, society can just veer in a sort of strange direction. Um, when I was a kid and Deep Blue, uh, that AI system built by IBM beat Gary Kasparov in chess, I remember my dad saying, um, this is the end of chess and no one's gonna play it again. But then it turned out that uh, actually, although the AI was better than humans, AI plus a human together was way better than an AI or the human. You know, the AI would pre pre present 10 options and the human would pick the best one or something like that and play the move. And everybody said, oh, we have this wonderful future of man and machine together, it's all, no problem, whatever. That lasted two months, three months, something like that. And then the AI got so smart that the human only made it worse because they didn't understand what was really going on and the AI alone trounced the AI and human. It's been like that ever since. 
Now, another interesting part of that story is everybody was convinced in the 90s that, that was the end of chess because if AI could beat humans, why, why should humans care? Chess has never been more popular than it is today. People love to watch chess. Something We're very focused on real people doing like real people things. So there was like a very interesting thing that happened there. Um, but this phenomenon, I think, is a really big deal. I... Um think that the popularity of it is because people want to we've advanced technology to where we can bring it to more people right we've popularized chess I have always played chess I was always um, going to play it in person but see that's the thing is to play it in person there's been more people that have been disqualified because they are using some form of a program or AI in order to inform them on how it is that they supposed to move. So what you're also seeing is a bigger gap between the people that actually care about chess versus the people that want to capitalize off of it. On one end, you have the people that actually value the in-person interactions and they're moving more towards that. On the other end, you have people that if I go on the chess.com app, I don't know if he got another computer up and he's running a simulation of every move that I make so that he can show that he's better than me and he's actually using AI or he's using a program and he's just moving according to whatever it is that whatever, you know, that the program is telling him to move. You see what I'm saying? So now the problem is even if you play in a human, you don't know if you're playing somebody that's using a program. And this is the problem is that we become so disconnected. We become so stupid that instead of us using it in order to help us improve, to practice against to create technology to bring us closer together, what we're using it for is nefarious ways like we always do. And it's the same thing with the internet. The internet was supposed to be a place where we can come together and it makes us more closer. We can get better products. But the internet was never supposed to kill brick and mortar stores. 